All right, good morning, everyone. Hello, Sujai, how are you doing? Good to have you here and uh, welcome. We're gonna dive into some, oh, uh, actually do. We're gonna do some neon lighting, as you can see, Nikos. Good to have you here, Nate. Fantastic. Broadcasting earlier than normal just to kind of, uh, you know, hit more of the world if we could and everything. So hopefully that works for you. So thank you so much for joining me and we'll get this party started. If that works for you. Uh, sweet. All right, so again, neon lighting, that's what we're working on. Welcome. My name is Paul Tranny. I'm going to dive right into this. Uh, you already saw my screen a, little, a second ago, and uh, let's go ahead and get to work. Uh, let me know where you're broadcasting or where you're hailing from. Looks like we've got Tunisia in the house, Belgium. Uh, Adobe Jason as well. Welcome, Adobe Jason. Uh, so just so you know what we're working on is we're working on some fun stuff like this. You've seen this like on Instagram, probably wondering how it works and all of that good stuff. My plan is to show you because I have uh, these various different examples, right? So how can you take something might be kind of seemingly plain and punch it up a lot by adding lighting? So that's what we're going to do again. Seemingly plain as we can see it right here, right? to something more like this, right? So that's the goal. Uh, and we're gonna have fun. We could do this with any photos. I even have um, this image as well. Kind of thought about like making this look like it's glowing as well. Wouldn't that be cool? So we could do all this super easily. Um, again, provided you know, provided you actually attend and, and watch. That's the whole goal. Cool, Pooja, let's do this. So again, right here, we have images. So what we could do is we could take lighting and we can turn it a bunch of different colors. Typically, you know, again, I can take a brush. I can take some pink like that. And with this brush, I would adjust the flow. So I take the flow down some, right? Uh, and I can kind of paint right up here, right? Which, again, is just filling in that area. It's going to be all about the blend modes. Now, these are live blend modes. So as I roll over, you can see uh, this light is going to fill in that light area. And it's not going to remove any of the darkened pixels, right? So we could easily go with darken. But usually I like to scroll through um, in lighting and screen. I know overlay and soft light are also going to be really good choices as we see how that looks. Again, super easy. All we did is just change that to say soft light and I can continue to paint and look like that's, of course, uh, sort of a nice pink glow uh, on uh, this street here, as you can see. I'll typically do a couple of layers. And again, I'm going to get more advanced here in a second. Um, and Alan, Alan Sharpie from the UK. Good to have you here, Alan. Uh, Alan, what other color shall we go with? I'm going to go with a teal if that works for you. And again, it's just all about taking sort of like a boring photo and making it more interesting. Again, I'm still painting the, the way I was earlier, but it's going to be about these blend modes. Uh, go from darken to lighten, clear down to overlay, which gives it a lot of pop. Soft light is just going to be softer. Okay, and again, just adjust that flow down. We should see a splash of light on the actual ground right here. So that's why I'm painting it right there. Okay, so now we have a number of lights that are colored. And I thought this would be good just to do for, um, you know, it is Pride Month here in the US. So that's why I'm doing all these different fun colors. Let's do yellow. You get the idea. Uh, but I'm going to get into something a little more advanced as well as we start to sort of create uh, graphics and neon bars is what I want to work with. Okay, so there's our splash of light. You get the idea on down the line. Let me know if you have questions. The teal is good, good, that works for you. I'm gonna maybe dive into some green. I think the green and the yellow, since they're neighbors in terms of colors, no, let's fix it. We'll change it to something else. Making this brush a little bit smaller using my open bracket key, command U to shift that color. So I'm just shifting that color right here because I think uh, maybe it's not popping enough. I can bring that more into like the red if I want to, or actually orange would be good right there. Okay, cool. 
easy enough we could start adding more and more light on down the line. I'm going to finish this because it's only going to take me two seconds and then I'll get into some of the more advanced work. There we go. Zoop. Splash of color because this light is another color. Command U. Shifting the color using hue and saturation. Command U is the shortcut. There we go. There's our blue on down the line. Right on. Let me know if you have any questions, Sugat. I want to know where people are from as well. New Orleans in the house. This is good. Just kind of checking in. Again, broadcasting a little, uh, a little earlier than usual just because I think we're well, probably missing. I, I, I probably do you a disservice because I'm missing some of, some of you guys because I'm not going at an earlier time. All right, cool. Done and done. You get the idea. This isn't bad for only spending, you know, 15 minutes on it, right? So we have our sort of pride month graphic. Uh, pa payao, yes, it can be saved for viewing. It's being actually recorded right now, so you can definitely watch it later. Would appreciate that for sure. One more splash of color down there. Last shift like that. There we go. That looks good. Hey, why not? Cool. Done and done. Sort of our fun pride scene. Let's go to something more advanced, shall we? Uh, uh, again, we can, we can do something like this if you want. We have this one. We have this neon statue. This one is actually really cool. Uh, so that's kind of why I want to go with it. Okay, so actually what's happening here is I have this guy separated out from the background. All I did was did a select subject, and then I cleaned it up a little bit. You do select subject is obviously going to select your subject because I want some rings to kind of go around certain parts of this uh, statue. So I can go ahead and pick using the, um, what do I call this, custom shape tool? Custom shape tool. By the way, see all these shapes right in here? You could just load this up. That's all I did. I went down here and I said, hey, you know what? Show me everything. So that's what all is. So if you don't have all these, just go to all and you can append to your current, uh, all your current images. But I'm going to go ahead and grab this circle. All this is is like a circle like outline is all it looks like. So again, I click, drag. We'll just draw out this ring. All right, there it is. Let's make a glow by giving it an outer glow using a layer style. Cool, uh, John Bookham, good to have you here, man. How are you doing? So there we go, adding that green, I can control the size. Might be a little bit more conservative initially. Here's the thing, you could actually double up these layer styles, okay? So if I use this little flyout menu for effects, you, I can actually add more layer styles, so I can have multiple strokes if I want to. Uh, one thing you don't, you can't add multiples of is the outer glow. So there's only one outer glow you can use, uh, but what you can do is you can use a drop shadow. So I'm going to turn on drop shadow, and I'm going to change this to just a light green. I can even go white, because typically how light works is you're going to have... Uh, it's going to be brighter the closer it is to that light. Okay, and what you do, rather than it being a drop shadow, sorry, this is so hard to see with the other one. Let's turn this off. So here's the here's the drop shadow as we see it. We just take this distance to zero, and it's basically an outer glow. Uh, and then I just make this a little more tight. I can still keep the spread kind of high but I'm gonna, not gonna make the size that big. All right, so it's gonna be more intense in the center is what's happening. All right, easy enough, done, done. Let's just have some fun here. Let's rotate this around. Let's like, actually, let's not even do that yet. Undo, copy, layer style, clear layer style, convert it to a smart object, paste layer style, there we go. 
this is what I can do. I don't know if you know this, uh, Vladimir or John or Darren or anyone. Anytime you do a Command T for transform, you could of course transform it, rotate it, scale it. But what if you want to distort it? You could just right click, and that gives you an easy access to distort. Because that's actually what I want to do. I want to kind of warp this into place. So larger in front, smaller in back, like that, right? And we can just kind of have that kind of wrap around. I'm not even sure if I'm crazy about the green, to be honest with you. Might need some more work. Um, but that's cool because, quite frankly, it's all about these layer styles. So I can go ahead and change this outer glow to our fun hot pink. Make sure our drop shadow is also pink. And then we can change the color of this object to that hot pink. Not bad, could use a lot more punch. So let's kind of dive into this a little bit more. So um, I have a couple things here. I've actually separated out the chest of this statue on this layer above. So if I just turn that on, you can see that it overlaps, right? So it's this piece that's on top of uh, that other part. Um, and I could still kind of go in and with a brush, still right there take the flow up, kind of add to it. So that's all I'm doing. You probably know the shortcuts for, of course, changing the brush size, right? We know we can hit the bracket, right? And we can change the brush size right up here, right? That's all I'm doing, bracket, bracket, bracket. Uh, what I'll typically do is I'll hold down the shift key. What the shift key does is it changes the hardness. So you can see right up here, um, check this out from smooth edge to hard edge, just by holding down the shift key. So now I can kind of come in here and you can see I've, I'm making it harder down here. As I want to adjust it, hit that shift key, kind of fade it out. I want some kind of spillage over the top of it like that. Again, I'm not crazy about this color. What is going on? Let's check my color modes. It's okay. I think the color is all right. The color is okay. All right, so let's kind of work on some splash of color as well on top of this. So what we what do we need to do? This is going to get kind of kind of tricky. But let's kind of turn that off. Let's just say we have this light right here. Uh, I can actually add adjustment layers, which is what I'm going to do right now. Oops, let's pull out this layers panel just so you can see it. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. So I can add something like, right here within this first segment, there's exposure. So you could use the curves, levels, brightness, contrast, whatever, you could use exposure. I'm gonna use exposure because I want parts of this to be darker and parts of it to be lighter. So watch as I crank that up, you can see I'm just kind of making this entire piece darker. It's gonna be much more dramatic. Okay, which is totally going to work. Take that exposure down, right? It's going to be dark. But then what I can do is I can start painting uh, with a lighter color on top of it. So uh, using black, I can remove some of this darkness to bring back some of that lightness. So as I paint, you can see right in here. Again, I'll take that flow down. Start painting on this, like just making it brighter in spots. Okay, so that's one thing I can do, but we could also do this with color. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So for this layer, check this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and colorize everything, right? And crank that up, right? And shift it to that sort of electric pink color, right? What's up, Riz? How are you doing? How is everyone? Did I? Oh, Command Y. Ah, oh, you are my savior. D Jesper, thank you so much on uh, YouTube. I uh, activated the CMYK output preview, so that's why it wasn't as saturated. Thank you so much. Uh, I accidentally hit Command Y, so I was going too many, doing too many shortcuts. Right, so either way, this is what we have. We're still painting with that brightness. Here's that color. Look, look at that. Let's invert that, right? Let's paint with... Again, white on top of, and we're painting, 
we're gonna bring in some of this hue and saturation, right, on top, and now we get that spillage of color, right, on this statue in the parts that we want. And again, I'm just controlling the flow. Typically, I'll take that flow down a lot and control that like splash of color, right? Just like that, you get the idea. Let's move that back. All right. You want green? We could do green. Christoph, Christoph's wondering if we do green. A couple other things, I'm gonna turn this on right here. We can see uh, all this stuff that has happened to it. I'm gonna duplicate these layers and put these layers on top and clipped, boop, boop, like that. So now what I can do is I can do the same thing. I'm gonna paint with this hue and saturation down here. So we could have that splash of color right down here on the top, okay? Even a little bit more exposure down here as well. Let's paint with black, right? Let's bring in some lightness. And that's essentially kind of how I'm bringing in this color. There we go, a little bit of spell. Just for you, those of you joining me, uh, just so you know, I'm kind of working on this type of work. As we can see, we just made that. I'm working on this one right here, uh, and there's actually other versions that I have as well. We could talk about this all day long, Riz, if you wanna have a conversation. Because guess what? This is actually done with 3D in Photoshop, which is really fun. Okay, having that wrap around, but all I did is just painted on that model. Okay, so again, a lot going on here. We'll go back to our version. We ha have that dramatic lighting. We're painting on adjustment layers is all we're doing, you know? Giving this guy a little more light right there if we want to, right? A little more brightness. Uh, being aware of which layers we're on. So I add a little bit more, just a touch. Cool. Hello, Edison. Edison is from Peru. Good to have you here, Edison. Fantastic. Ooh, it looks better with more light. I just kind of needed this um, uh, exposure to kind of make it darker on certain parts of this. There we go. Wait for it. Let's bring that in. Okay, let's add another element really fast. It could be a glowing sphere. It could be another uh, shape that kind of wraps around. Again, we have access to all these shapes. You can find out whatever you want out on Adobe Stock. I might grab a... Uh, let's try a triangle. Why not? Here's our big triangle holding down the shift key. What color shall I go with? Open to suggestions. So far I've heard somebody say green. Um, I can go with green. I don't know if green and... Um, pink really match, so I, I'm gonna go with a, a teal. Um, because these are like, pink is like a tertiary color. It's not a primary, I don't even, it's not even a secondary color. It's like third on the list. So I need to pick another color that's like third on the list, if you will. Don't have time for color theory and all that stuff, um, but just so you know, I um, do it for a reason. Command T. For transform, right click, and then we can access something like distort, right? And we can distort this into place. Like that, maybe rotate it. Zoop. I don't know, something like that. Distorting it. Having that go back. There we go, we'll do something like that. Cool. Uh, I have blue, a suggestion for blue from Muhammad. Thanks, Muhammad. Um, I kind of have a little teal action going on. It's kind of like blue, so blue could work as well. I think teal makes it a little brighter, so you just get more of that, uh, that splash of color everywhere. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Again, a little bit of a drop shadow just so it's even stronger the closer it is to that line. Click OK, and now we can start to kind of like play with this. Right, same situation, what do I have to do? A lot of times you'll duplicate layers and make layer sandwiches. Shall we? Shall we make some layer sandwiches? I don't know if people are hungry, but um, 
what we could do is I can turn on this selection you know how it goes let's paint this in like that there we go that uh, works okay for what I'm trying to do right now let's move this down and oh no, let's move it up wait for it it's always fascinating so I'm actually painting um, with black and it's slowly like removing these lines it's because it has that glow on it which makes it super interesting I ultimately need that underneath oh yeah Let's go ahead and turn off those glows just so you can see what I'm painting on. I'm painting on this layer mask. So this is what I have. With that done, I can start to kind of like remove this one. It does look different um, when I switch back and turn on the glow, right? But this is kind of the angle that I'm going for, something like that. Works for me. There we go. Cool. Anyways. So yeah, so Hammond, by the way, I'm being I'm is asking about wouldn't the light be all around? Wouldn't the highlights be all around? The highlights would. There is a tertiary there's a third light source that's just white. So that's just, there is actually a, just a white light source, kind of like I was doing back here with this painting, right? So there is a, another light source. So it's not just everything is saturated. It's kind of what I'm going for. Um, again, right in here, I can take a look, adding another hue and saturation. For this hue and saturation, since we're doing teal, we'll shift this to teal. Again, just so I can see it. B for brush, I can start to paint on this teal like that, just in these highlights. There we go. You get the idea. Um, yeah, so it's like I'm dealing with 3D. You could actually, Fuad, you could actually make actual 3D here as well. So I'll kind of stop with this one. I'm, I'm slowing down in general. Um, but I have all these other versions. So this is the final version, which looks really cool, where I was painting around uh, the face entirely. And you can see how complex this gets. If we open up that original, here's the original with all of those layers, right? It's actually not even that complex. But you can see these hue and saturation layers. As I turn them off, you can see everything start losing color, losing contrast, right? Um, and again, all starting with this rectangle as well. Uh, we can get more advanced, like this version, right? As we take a look at it, let's go Apollo. Wait for it. Maybe I don't have it open. Here we go. Here's the final for Apollo as well. Um, Charlotte, just so you know, I use an initial glow and I'll just do this really fast as well, but the initial glow is actually done with a layer style typically on the object, right? So that's typically what's happening. Um, and then I actually paint in uh, more glows as well. So again, here's a different version going to this woman statue as my last one, and this is the one that I kind of want to focus on because I want to show you really fast if you wanted to make actual 3D. So again, new piece. Wait for it. And I've gone for about 25 minutes. So again, right here, we can do, we can have some fun with this because this is actually done in 3D just to make it even more advanced. So check this out. There's 3D in Photoshop. If I take a look at this first ring right up here at the top, right? It's just a circle that I extruded. So I went to 3D, new extrusion from selected layer. 
And then you can see actually giving it, giving it a glow, but now I can kind of rotate it around and get that perfect position that I want. And you even get that hard edge if you want it as well, right? So that's exactly what I did in that case. Let's move it back, move it back. Thank you, multiple undos. But again, where does the glow come from? You get it. Right there. All right. Um, slowing down now. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Again, typically I'll start with black and white or work on the exposure of the piece. Add the shape that I want. I don't know what other shapes are that interesting for this. Because usually thin lines work really great. You know, but yeah, if we want to do a triangle, we can do a triangle. I mean, in here, selecting a triangle. Here's my triangle. You got it. You know how this goes. Super easy. Oops. There we go. And as I put it behind her, <clears throat> Since you asked, and this is kind of going to be the last question I answer, but it's painting with hue and saturation. So again, turning on hue and saturation adjustment layer. Here it is. Selecting colorize, right? Increasing that saturation a lot. Shifting it to that teal color, like so. Right? And then just clipping it. In fact, I'll just have both of these clipped. That hue and saturation is covering everything, so I'll invert that mask, right? And now what I can do is I can paint on with that hue and saturation that I just applied. So right in here, painting like so, um, it's doing the obvious, right? And the great thing is, is I'm not painting with one color, so I could always jump in here and decide, hey, you know what? That hue is off. It needs to be a different color. I can adjust accordingly, right? So that's what I do right in here. B for brush, paint on, on our face, and uh, continue to work. So you get the idea. I've gone for too long, I think. 28 minutes. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. So the, yes, this video is on YouTube. It's basically everywhere. Um, and I can, again, just show you the final pieces as well. Here's the woman statue. Again, just work that I'm working on. And again, you could start with anything. Um, I've actually pulled some images down from Adobe Stock. In fact, you could see that original right here. This is the original uh, street scene that I used in that picture that I was working on earlier. So fantastic, everybody. I think I'm wrapping up now. Um, where did I get the statues? That's a great question as well. You could search for Apollo. Apollo, uh, these are like royalty free images. Um, so I think I actually got the Apollo image from um, the uh, Orange County uh, Museum of Art. But a lot of these classical like paintings and sculptures are actually free and available for public use. So just to do a search on it, uh, use Adobe Stock if you want as well. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And again, this is the Apollo PSD, as you can see, or JPEG. Cool, guys. Uh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, and by the way, you are right. So Charlotte's just asking about 
you could search using Creative Cloud libraries, you could search for statues and it'll pull it up like right within Photoshop if you want or within Illustrator. So yes, to your point, Charlotte, who asks the, uh, an update to Photoshop makes it easier. Yeah, it does make it easier to find images. Uh, I do like this sometimes because it is full screen and by the way, I can start to filter uh, graphics out easier as well. So as I take a look right in here, I can say, hey, give me an image with copy space right there for instance and it'll give me some you know images that actually just have more space for copy so you get the idea <sighs> yes <laughs> thanks so much everyone um appreciate you thanks for hanging out uh this is being posted to well it's going to be everywhere i will actually post this work to instagram by the way boop right over there oh look at my numbers here we go switching over you can see right here, uh, I'll post this to Instagram and Twitter today, some of this work, just so you know. Uh, but hopefully you found this valuable. Just going er earlier, live streaming earlier than usual, uh, so we can hit like more of the world. So let me know if you like this, um, and tell your friends. And don't forget to floss and drink lots of water. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. See ya.